We'll be getting into some of the basic modeling tools soon, but before we do that, we should talk about normals, since that's one of the key concepts of computer graphics, and it explains a lot of what's going on under the hood. If you understand normals, you'll be able to pick up these tools much faster. Essentially, normals are just the direction that the mesh components are facing. This has a couple of really important functions, one of them being rendering. On our cube here, notice how we have one side that's dark, the top side is light, and the side on the left is kind of in between. Blender only knows how to color this because it knows which direction our faces are pointing. If you want, you can change these effects over in the Solid Shaded View dropdown, where you can pick any one of these other studio lights, or lock the effect to the world so it's not rotating as you're rotating your view. But for now, I'll just leave it with the default. To actually see our normals, let's jump into edit mode. I'll hit tab, and then up in the edit mode overlays dropdown, I'll go down to normals and turn on face normals, which is the one on the far right with the line coming out of the square. I'll increase the size and move my cube up a little bit so that it's off the axes. We'll talk about the other types of normals in the fundamentals of mesh modeling, but for now, let's just select an edge, take our move tool, and as we move it around, notice how the normals change. They're just pointing in the same direction as the face. And in fact, the name normals actually comes from a physics term, which refers to an imaginary line that's perpendicular to a surface. So you could probably also call these perpendiculars, but that's kind of a mouthful. If we take one of the vertices of our cube and delete it, then we can see inside. Notice how all the lines are pointing outwards. This is because our faces have two distinct sides, a front and a back. If you're coming from a game engine, you may even be surprised that Blender is drawing the back side of a face. Most games only draw the front side of faces in order to save on resources. If you want to see that same effect in Blender, then just head over to your Solid Shaded View dropdown, go down to Options, and turn on Back Face Culling. Now we can only see the front side of our faces, and the back sides are invisible. If I deselect my object, it looks like it's completely gone. Obviously, this is a little bit confusing sometimes, so I generally leave that off. I'll go down and uncheck Back Face Culling, and then hit Tab to go back into Edit Mode. Seeing all of the little lines point out of our object can be a little bit weird, especially if we have more of a dense mesh, like for example, a sphere. This can be a little bit strange to work with, but knowing which direction our face is pointing is incredibly important. So instead of turning on normals, which I'll go to my edit mode overlays and turn that back off, we can also go to our general overlays and turn on face orientation. Now all of the front side of the faces are going to be blue and all the back side of the faces are going to be red. So I'll just box select a little patch here and delete those vertices. And then we can see that the inside is indeed red. Having your faces point in the wrong direction can actually cause a lot of problems. But in order to explain that, we need to first talk about smooth and flat shading. So I'll go back to my overlays, turn off face orientation, go into object mode, and I'll delete my sphere here and go to shift A and add a monkey. This is a fairly low poly object, so we can see each of these faces individually pretty clearly. And all of the faces on this object, as well as all of the objects that we've looked at so far in this course, have been completely flat, which gives these more rounded forms a very faceted look. Again, that's because Blender knows which direction the face is pointing, and shades the entire face with one color accordingly. However, we can also tell Blender to smoothly blend between all of our normals. To do that, let's go to Object, and down to Shade Smooth. Now, this might not look amazing, even though Blender does have a very good smooth shading algorithm, but that's just because it's a really low poly object. Smooth shading generally requires more polygons in order to look good. Now we can also switch between smooth and flat shading over in our right-click context menu. Just right-click and choose Shade Flat or Shade Smooth. There's also one option in between there called Shade Auto Smooth, at least if you're using Blender 4.0. If you're from the future and using Blender 4.1 or later, I'll show you how to use that new option in just a second. But you can Shade Auto Smooth and then head down to the Redo panel in the bottom left, or use the hotkey F9 to bring that up anywhere. And here's where you can change the smoothing angle. Any edge with an angle above this threshold will be sharp, and everything else will be smoothed. Now, you can also set things as smooth or sharp in edit mode. So let's hit tab to go into edit mode. And first, let's do some face selection. So I'll hit three on the top row to go to face selection mode. Take a couple faces, and then I'll go to face and shade flat. Then if I go back to object mode, then I can see that everything else is smooth except for those faces. If I want to mark custom edges as sharp, then what I need to do is go to edge select mode, select some edges, go to the edge menu, and choose mark sharp. Then if I go to object mode, you can see that the inside of these faces are smooth, but the outside perimeter that I marked is split. Now in Blender 4.0, marking edges as sharp in edit mode only works when auto smooth is enabled. So if you go to shade smooth, then that's going to disappear. 
And if you go to Shade Flat, then there will be no custom smoothing. So in order to get some custom smooth normals, you'll always have to shade auto smooth. If you want only your custom edges to be sharp, simply turn this all the way up to 180. Then you can go into edit mode, mark what you want. And in this case, since I'm in edge select mode, I'll right click to go to my context menu and mark sharp. Now I'll switch over to an alpha version of Blender 4.1. And I'm using a different theme here just to make it clear that I'm using a different Blender version. And the way that it'll work from here on out is that when you right click, you can shade smooth and flat just like before, but you'll get this option for shade smooth by angle instead of auto smooth. When you turn that on, then of course you can set your smoothing angle, but there actually is no auto smooth property. Instead, if you hit tab to go into edit mode, you'll see that all of these edges are marked as sharp. And you can go in and edit them manually. So you no longer have to worry about whether auto smooth is on or not, which is really, really nice. But the one thing to be careful of is that if you go to shade flat or shade smooth, then it'll overwrite all of your custom marked sharp edges. Overall though, this should be a much more intuitive way to work because you can simply shade something as smooth, go in and mark sharp right away without having to worry about auto smooth at all. I'm very much looking forward to this change, but for now let's head back to Blender 4.0. And now let's take a look at what happens when faces are pointing the wrong way. For that, I'll delete my monkey, hit shift A and add a cylinder instead. Then I'll right click and shade this as smooth. You can see that this doesn't look particularly great. And again, that's just because of a lack of geometry. We have several faces going around the side, but only one face at the top, one running the length of the side, and then one on the bottom. Since the shading is averaging between these faces, this 90 degree change is a pretty extreme thing to average between, and that's why we're getting this extreme shading. If we had more faces in here to blend between, then this would look a whole lot better. But for now, what I want to show you is what happens if we go into edit mode, select some of our faces, I'll hit three in the top row to go to face select mode, select some faces, and then go to mesh, normals, or use the hotkey alt N and choose flip. Now the shading looks absolutely horrible. When there are two faces that are pointing in opposite directions right next to each other, Blender of course can't smoothly blend between them, so we get this glitchy artifact. And if you're brand new to 3D modeling, I promise you that you're going to see this at some point. So the way to fix it is to select the offending faces, go to mesh, normals, and flip them back around. Or if you don't want to painstakingly select all of your faces individually, what you can do is just select everything by pressing A, and then hit Alt N to bring up that menu, and choose recalculate outside. This will make sure that all of your faces are pointing outside of the mesh and will fix a lot of errors. A lot of tools are also based on the direction of the face normals. So if you have them flipped, even if it's not causing that visual artifact, their behavior might be opposite of what you'd expect. And that can definitely cause some confusion. So if anything is going weird in Blender, a tool isn't behaving how it's supposed to, or things are looking a little bit glitchy, the first thing to try is to select everything, hit Alt N and recalculate outside. In fact, this is so common that it even has its own hotkey, Shift N. So if we have some faces selected, Alt N and flip, we can actually just hit A to select everything and Shift N to recalculate. You're going to be doing that a lot, so it's a good hotkey to remember. Now go ahead and practice switching between flat shading and smooth shading. Also practice smoothing by angle, flipping your normals and recalculating them. Once you've got that down, let's get modeling. <laughs> 